I'm sure glad that worked. Hello again. Much of geometry has to do with what's called formal logic. And an important part of logic is understanding how to use conditional statements. So let's take a look. Here are some examples of conditional statements. They're called conditional because they're only true under certain conditions. And each of these statements has two parts. The if part and the then part. Watch as I underline the if part of each one. That underlined part is called the hypothesis. And notice, sometimes it's at the beginning, and sometimes it's at the end. And it doesn't always contain the word if. But the idea of if is still there. So, what's the hypothesis? It's the if part. Now, let's look at the then part. It's called the conclusion. And that's because it's the part that happens after the hypothesis takes place. Let's underline the conclusion of each conditional statement with two lines. And while it's sometimes called the then part, the word then may or may not be there. And like the hypothesis, the conclusion might appear at the end of the statement. Or it might be at the beginning. So, if you can identify the hypothesis and the conclusion, you're in great shape for what comes next. Watch what we're going to do now on this final group. We're going to turn the hypothesis into the conclusion and vice versa. Check it out. The new statement that's been formed is called the converse of the original statement. And how'd that form the converse? Easy. Just switch the hypothesis and conclusion. And check this out. While the original statement is true, think about the truth of the converse. With this one, the converse is not true. Could have been a cat or an elephant. The statement was true and the converse was not true. Let's try another one. Like this. Once again, we form the converse by switching the hypothesis and conclusion. And check out the truth of these two. The original statement? Definitely true. How about that converse? True or not? That one is true as well. An important point here. For some conditional statements, the converse is true. And for others, the converse is not true. That's very important. So let's try the last one. Your job is to form the converse. And then figure out if the converse is true or false. Here's what I got. That converse is not true. Could be an equilateral triangle or a regular octagon. So, how about a quick summary? We showed that conditional statements have two parts. The hypothesis and conclusion. And if the conditional statement reads, if A, then B, then the converse would be, if B, then A. And that converse may or may not be true. So what we're saying is this. Geometry uses conditional statements. And from a conditional statement, you can form the converse. There you go. Conditional statements.